welcome to a new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Shabi, and this week we're putting the spotlight on a surprising form of pollution. While as a nation, France has committed to cleaning up its environmental act, on the ground, local authorities are confronted to a growing and worrying problem illegal waste disposal. We're here in the Yvelines, less than an hour outside of Paris. What was once farmed as arable land has been transformed into a giant open-air landfill, much to the distress of local residents. The Sea of Garbage. That's the name the inhabitants of Carrière have given to the largest makeshift landfill in France. It's a massive field spanning 300 hectares, at least 40 of which are covered with thousands of tons of mixed waste. It's mostly garbage from construction sites. It's rather impressive. There's everything from wood, asbestos, cement sheeting. And here you have solvents, paint remover, all sorts of canisters with big pollution risks. For a century, this farmland provided food for nearby Parisians. But eventually, the soil yielded less return. Wastewater from Paris was then used as a fertilizer. But the hasty solution came with harmful repercussions. The water was filled with heavy metals that polluted the soil. And in response, a governmental decree in 2000 banned all farming here. Then, the field's abandonment gradually led to illegal dumping. And public officials did nothing to stop it. Today, the mayor has returned with two MPs. They've been commissioned by the Environment Ministry to write a report on illegal dumping. They are joined by a group of local residents. For those people who don't want to pay the real price for dumping their waste, at least 100 euros a ton and 500 euros a ton for waste containing asbestos, well, you can be sure that these people are going to find another way to come and dump here. Prevention, education and stricter penalties are just some of the new strategies the government is now pushing for to try and curb illegal dumping. Concrete measures are expected for 2019. For more on this, we're joined by the mayor of Legneville in the northern region of Oise, Christophe Dietrich. Hello. Hello. Now, this type of eyesore is nothing new for you. Tell us about your experience of illegal dumping. So it's actually not that rare, unfortunately. When I was elected in Legneville, we were dealing with four or five depots of waste per week. So we systematically looked into who was responsible and lodged a complaint with the courts. No further action was taken over any of these complaints. The reason given last time was that there was no longer any violation. So at this point, we had to find concrete answers to the demands of the residents and furthermore react to the total lack of concern on the part of the government and the justice system. This is how we put the return to sender system into action. We identify who's responsible, we collect the waste, and we leave it right on their doorstep. And how hard is it to determine who's to blame here, for instance? It's plain to see that construction companies are responsible, and we can identify them easily through barcodes and invoices. The real difficulty is being sure that the waste has been disposed of in that location by that party, and not by another. That's the real challenge. But today we have an incredible resource in the form of the internet. We've really traced things very, very far back. And above all, we count on the involvement of the public, who are very important. They see the waste arrive and give us very important information. So we've reached the point where we found the source of the waste in 95% of cases. 
des déchets. Um, but if we are talking about companies here that are paid to get rid of this trash, why is it so hard to get back to them? There are two types of businesses. There are big companies that outsource directly to businesses in other European countries, which have no concern for ecology, and so they increase their margins and offload their waste anywhere. Then there are small French businesses that last as long as it takes to construct them. Then they disappear, and so they don't have to deal with these issues. On the other hand, the artisans that we work with on a daily basis, the businesses in local areas, they are systematically reprocessing waste. So your method of, of bringing the trash back to the offenders, how efficient is it and how much help are you getting from national authorities? When I was elected as mayor, we were at four or five depots per week in my municipality. Since we've put the new system in place, we're at two or three depots a year. This result far surpasses what we're expecting. However, even if we're actually getting media coverage and the results are positive, there's still been a polite silence on the part of the state. With both the government and the judiciary, there's always complete radio silence. Each successive government talks big on ecology. They talk to us about the big environmental issues, but they forget the small everyday problems which could become a serious issue. Because waste leads to more waste very rapidly. So this very Parisian and centralised vision means that today nobody can provide concrete answers even when there are already answers. All that needs to happen is for mayors to be allowed to deploy the police, and I guarantee that once we catch someone and slap two fines on them at €15,000, then we'll scare the others off. As you said yourself, France is, says it's at the forefront of climate issues. It was uh, the Paris Climate Agreement, for instance. Uh, do you feel that there's a shift in people's attitudes? While we've been uh, filming this interview, we've seen trucks go by with trash and leave empty again. Are people's awareness on climate issues changing at all? I would say that in my community there's been a radical change. Today, when a truck passes by carrying waste in an inappropriate area, I receive four or five calls because everybody has my phone number. So much so that last year, in July, before people could dispose of their waste, there were already four or five people waiting. But that's because the results were good, because there was media coverage, and so people forced themselves to be vigilant, to keep a lookout, and before long this will help local ecology. Yet, I think this happens mainly on a local level, because on a global level, responsibility is being diluted, even though locally it is improving. On la renforce. Christophe Dietrich, thank you very much. Merci. Well, as if France's trash troubles weren't bad enough, sometimes the problem doesn't come from within. Neighbouring Switzerland may be known for its squeaky clean streets, as you're about to see the residents and its border have an unusual take on waste management. A new activity has emerged along the border between France and Switzerland. Getting rid of rubbish in an unauthorised place, a growing phenomenon like in this border town in France, where the bins are filling up with Swiss waste. One day, we went through the rubbish here and found some Swiss mail. There's no need for them to dump their stuff here, especially because it costs us money. If France is becoming Switzerland's rubbish dump, it's because of a new rubbish collection system that the Swiss are gradually putting in place. In Born Truy, they've had a bin back tax since 2011. Collectors only pick up those with the right logo. Why aren't you taking that one? Because it doesn't say it's been taxed. Unlike this one here. These are the official rubbish bags sold through the local council, and they are 10 times more expensive than the ones you can find in France. This is an official bag. The price includes the cost for collection, transportation, disposal. The bag might be more expensive, but it means we don't need to raise taxes elsewhere to finance the system. An expensive system at €2 Euros for a 35-litre bag. This resident will have to take a rubbish bag home. 
why didn't you use an official bag? Because my tax bag isn't full yet. Is it too expensive? Perhaps. Yes, that as well. The hefty price tag keeps customs officials on their toes. French customs, anything to declare? Always on the lookout for fly tippers. You said you had nothing to declare, but your trunk is full of trash. You have to be honest. By goods, I thought you meant alcohol or food. This driver has been caught out. She pays a 150 euro fine for her three bags. I just forgot that I still have my rubbish in the boot. <laughs> In 2017, officials in this region counted 10 tons of unauthorized waste, and the trend is growing. To catch those who made it through customs, this local council has set up a 24-hour CCTV camera to watch over their bins. We see the first person arrive with a huge bag. He's carrying it with both hands. A second person opens the container and there you go. The footage will then be sent to the Swiss authorities, as the French don't have the rights to stop their rubbish dumping neighbours. Well, this is where we're leaving this edition. Stay tuned to France 24. For weeks now, Nicaragua has seen violent confrontations on its streets. On the road to Masaya, the rebel stronghold, walls are covered with anti-Ortega graffiti. Determined to topple the president, young protesters erect new barricades every day. The fact that he's attacked unarmed students, sent thugs out against us while we were just protesting, that's so unfair. That was the trigger for all of this. It's sad because so many people believed in him. In a moving report from deep inside Nicaragua, our journalists met protesters and their families who say they are fighting without weapons or supplies. Reporters presented by Mark Owen on France 24 and France24.com. France 24 at the World Cup. Find us daily bringing you all the news from Russia 2018. I'll be following France's national side all the way through from here in Russia with four channels. Follow us online, on social media, and of course on our website. Allez les bleus, allez France 24. Join us every day for our live coverage of all the World Cup action.